In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the reasons why chicken is so cheap, the economics of chicken, or what many have coined chickenomics. I'll be revealing some thought-provoking facts about the industry, big business farming, and how it may even impact you as a consumer. Though before we start, please do hit the subscribe button at any time during this video, as your support really helps grow this channel. Now, it's safe to say that chicken is a popular dish, but just how popular? Well, in 2018 alone, over 68 billion meat chicken carcasses were consumed globally, and this is set to continue rising. To put that in context, the standing biomass of domesticated poultry, mostly chickens, has been calculated to be about three times higher than that of the total biomass of all wild bird species combined. This rise is largely off the back feathers of the insatiable demand for chicken globally. The average global poultry consumption per person in 2017 was 14 kilograms per head. Though it is much higher in certain countries, according to a European research report, the US leads the way in chicken consumption, consuming 49.7 kilograms in 2018 alone, followed surprisingly by Brazil at 46.8 kilograms and Argentina at 46.3 kilograms per head. One of the reasons why chicken is so popular is because it is considered to be a relatively cheap meat. Looking at this Australian study into the price of chicken relative to other meats reveals that despite surging demand, the prices remained relatively stable. But why have chicken prices remained so stable? Well, that's because of ever-increasing supply. The global production of poultry meat has increased rapidly over the last 50 years, growing more than 12-fold between 1961 and 2014. Taking a look at this chart of global livestock numbers over the long term reveals how chickens dominate global livestock. This rise in production goes beyond just demand-side motivations too, as chicken is actually incredibly efficient to produce. Comparing it to the main other meats of pork, lamb and beef, it has the greatest energy conversion efficiency of feed to animal growth, and takes the least amount of feed to produce an equivalent kilo of meat. Moreover, of the feed converted to meat, it has the highest conversion to protein at circa 20%, with the others between 9-4%. to but how exactly do we get to the rise of the almighty chicken? The ancestor of the modern meat chicken, known as the broiler chicken, is the red jungle fowl, native to tropical Southeast Asia. Despite being the genetic grandparent of modern chickens, they are very different. Whilst the red jungle fowl has an average adult weight of 1kg, their adult descendants reach 4-5 to five times that weight. Life expectancy is even more startling, with an average lifespan of 12-14 to 14 years, compared to modern meat chickens just five to seven weeks. Such a compressed lifespan necessitates incredibly quick growth, with modern chickens' weight increasing over four times in the first seven days of their life alone. Given the dramatic differences between the red jungle fowl and its broiler chicken descendant, how exactly was the broiler chicken created? It may surprise you to learn that the chicken we eat today stems from a 1940s contest, the Chicken of Tomorrow contest, to be precise. US food retailer AMP Company and the US Department of Agriculture came up with a marketing idea in the late 1940s to create the perfect meat chicken for mass production. At the end of the contest, the winner was clear, the parent of the modern broiler chicken, which over the last 60 years has been selectively bred into what we know today. Make no mistake, the broiler chicken is truly man-made, though contrary to popular belief, the ability of it to grow so rapidly is not a consequence of a cocktail of hormones and chemicals but instead a result of intensive selective breeding over the years to reach their bulked up size today. The average weight of a broiler chicken today is four times heavier than it was in the 1950s. Considering its growth over the years, in 1955 it took 73 days to produce the average broiler, which weighed 1.4 kilograms. By 1980, it took 52 days to produce a 1.8 kilogram broiler, and in 2011, that same weight could be produced in 38 days. It is clearly a corporate creation, often being benchmarked against key performance indicators such as meat yield, growth time and weight, all to be able to produce a cheap and marketable product for consumers. Such has been the level of human intervention that scientists suggest that the broiler chicken can be classified as a genetic marker of 21st century human civilization, a species which is entirely dependent on the technosphere, a perfectly controlled atmosphere, regulated lighting, and food, losing its ability to exist in the wild long ago. However, it is not just the broilers themselves which have undergone drastic change, it is also the way they are raised. Farming has become a vertically integrated system, 
with all points of the supply chain, from hatcheries to processing, typically overseen or operated by a single corporation. This is part of the reason why just three companies worldwide supply 90% of broiler chicks. Now, while the system is integrated, it may surprise you to learn that the US chicken industry is still dominated by small farmers, with annual farm sales of less than $350,000. Such small farms account for over 60% of broiler production. This is a massive proportion relative to the agricultural industry as a whole, where only an estimated 29% of the value of production occurs in small farms. Crucially, production is dominated by contracts between farmers and big corporations, which account for over 90% of all broiler production in the US. However, such contracts appear to be quite a contentious issue. On the one hand, contract farmers benefit from being provided with the chicks, transport, veterinary care and feed by the corporate supplier. As a result, the supplier takes on about 80% of the cost of raising the flock, with the farmer having to supply the labour, housing, utilities and maintenance. However, critics have said that this can make the farmer over-reliant on the supplier, as the farmer is forced to enter a tournament-style system with other local farmers to determine the price paid for the flock. In a nutshell, local farmers compete with each other to be paid the best price on a variety of different metrics, including the health and weight of their flock. Critics have said that the tournament system pricing can be opaque, with farmers at the mercy of the pricing system itself. Not only that, but suppliers have been criticised for demanding certain farmers to invest in expensive upgrades to facilities and equipment. This can lead farmers into large levels of debt and financial risk. A combination of small farm incomes and the rigorous demands of contracts is why most new broiler housing is debt financed. What you may not have known though, is that a large part of the debt is backed by the US government. The Farm Service Agency actually underwrites a large proportion of this debt, to the tune of $210 million per year between 2009 and 2013, with the agency guaranteeing lenders loans up to 95% of the financial loss of the principal and interest. Thinking about the financials for small farmers though, they were likely to earn about $11.50 an hour on a net income basis, according to a 2011 study based on pricing at the time. This goes to highlight the financial landscape many small farmers find themselves in. Now, any profits of course come at a cost as well. With such a commercialised and man-made production system, intensively farmed broilers are not meant to live beyond the production life cycle of 5-7 to seven weeks. Those that do are at an increased risk of a host of health problems due to their rapid growth process. One study on Dutch, British, Italian and Belgian flocks found that on average, 57% of the fast-growing chickens had severe walking problems. In truth, I could make a whole video dedicated to some of the health problems that modern broilers face. However, despite the health concerns, the production of broiler meat is set to continue to grow to meet ever-increasing demand. This demand is driven partly by the growing wealth in developing countries, with poultry expected to account for 70% of the increase in meat consumption globally, that chicken is deemed a healthier meat than pork, beef or lamb, or, as explained, it being a relatively cheap source of protein. So, overall, what can be said about the economics of chicken? The broiler chicken has undergone an incredible journey from its ancestor, the red jungle fowl. The demand for a cheap source of protein has been met by an integrated farming system to produce a fast and efficient source of meat. In the largest market in the world, the United States, the system is orchestrated by big corporates, but the growing is largely done by small family farms. There is contention around the benefits and risks farming contracts and the tournament pricing system can deliver. And of course, that intensive farming has come at the cost to the long-term health of broilers themselves, as ultimately it has created a bird made for a short lifespan to fit a production life cycle. As we come to the end of this video, I hope this has provided you with some insight into the world's most popular meat, why the broiler has come to dominate production, and how the contract growing system works. As always, thank you for watching this video, and if you'd like to continue seeing more of these videos, please do hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to comment below on what your thoughts are on the topic too. As we Alt Simplified would love to hear more from you, is this a topic you had given much thought to before? Will it change the way you look at chicken, or has this just made you hungry? Whatever your thoughts, let us know in the comments below. See you in the next video.